Friday, November 13th, 1942, 1.48 a.m. Anti-aircraft cruiser USS Atlanta patrols the dark waters off Guadalcanal Island in the South Pacific. USS Enterprise has been out of action for two weeks. And with all the other carriers in the Pacific down for the count, these smaller ships must face the enemy alone. Atlanta has sent her share of Japanese planes to the hunting grounds of hell. But tonight, she's stalking Imperial warships, one of 13 American vessels on the prowl for an enemy force of destroyers, battleships, and cruisers. Two massive naval groups are about to collide in a terrific clash of steel. But what the crew of Atlanta doesn't know is that they're already locked in the crosshairs of the enemy. The first of the enemy gunships move into position to bombard Henderson Field from Guadalcanal's Sea Lark Channel. But these bloody waters will soon go by another name, Iron Bottom Sound. The final grave for dozens of warships and thousands of men. In the pre-dawn darkness, the enemy ships run right into the guns of USS Atlanta and the American surface fleet patrolling the waters off Guadalcanal. Like battling pirate ships, the two sides pound each other from close range, and the cruiser Atlanta is caught in the firestorm. Steel lightning explodes as shells and giant orange tracers fire into the night. Japanese and American gunships crucify each other with savage volleys of shot and shell in Guadalcanal's iron bottom sound. Hit by the direct fire from more than six American ships, the destroyer Akatsuki blows up. Destroyer USS Laffey closes in alongside battleship PA and rakes her decks with rapid fire five inch shells and machine guns. From the island, U.S. Marines watch the epic battle unfold. It goes on for hours. One of the surviving American naval officers described this particular action as a, a barroom brawl after the lights had been shot out, and that's exactly what it was. Dawn reveals the scene of an apocalypse. The waters off Guadalcanal are coated in oil, debris, and human remains. Hundreds of sailors, including two American admirals, have been slaughtered in one of the grittiest naval gun battles of the war. Throughout the morning, a sea tug navigates the bloody waters, rescuing American sailors. Most Japanese survivors are killed. Among the casualties of November 13th is cruiser USS Juno. Lost when the ship sunk are all five Sullivan brothers of Waterloo, Iowa. As a result of the loss of the five Sullivan brothers on the USS Juno, the Navy implemented a sole survivor policy, meaning that the sole surviving son of a family would be reassigned to non-hazardous duty. The thought being that if he continued to serve in hazardous duty, they didn't want a family that lost all of its sons in combat. So the result was sole survivors would be reassigned and would not be in harm's way. The long morning of November 13th, is one of the darkest periods in the history of the U.S. Navy. The grim tally. Cruisers Atlanta and Juno are gone. USS Laffey and four destroyers are wiped out. Four additional Allied ships are damaged, and more than 1,400 Americans have perished. Once again, the U.S. Navy has had to pay a terrible price to hold Guadalcanal for another day.